When the original PlayStation was released in stores, the opportunity to test out the somewhat budding genre of 3D fighters started with a pair of games, Battle Arena Toshinden and Tekken. Not long after, another entry in the genre caught my eye that, ironically enough, was published by Namco, named Soul Blade. The game at the time was fast, fluid, and very fun, with the focus being on weapon-based combat, where blocking continuously would break a fighter's weapon, leaving them unarmed in armed combat. The years would go on, and the sequels to Soul Blade entered my home including the arguable high point in the franchise with Soul Calibur 2. While I enjoyed Soul Calibur 3 and 4, Soul Calibur 5's negative reviews from critics and fighting game fans convinced me to stay away from the game. Over six years after 5's release, the sixth numbered entry in the series arrives with a rebooting of the franchise's narrative, a few changes, and a bunch of controversy both reasonable and exaggerated. I was ready to enter a world built on the intertwining of souls and swords one more time, even if I wasn't going to shell out extra money for an on-disc DLC character. Soul Calibur 6 isn't just some bare bones fighter this time around, featuring just exhibition and online options. Beyond the actual action are several modes to keep a player busy, including the return of character creator. There are two single player modes mixing a visual novel style presentation with some battles and item management, with Soul Chronicle and Libra of Soul. Soul Chronicle is essentially the retelling of the events from the original Soul Calibur that can last around two hours if a player is just completing the initial story. In Soul Chronicle there are also extra fights and sub-stories the player can take part in that will earn achievements and trophies while fleshing out some of the characters lives and actions during the time of the main story, lasting around three to four more hours in total. Libra of Soul is similar to Weapon Master mode from Soul Calibur 2, where the player takes a created character throughout a map, taking on fights and most importantly, collecting weapons that are needed so the player can overcome adversaries usually higher level than the protagonist. Libra of Soul is a mode that can take the player up to 15 hours to complete, without doing all the side quests or training. Of course, there's the online modes that will add many extra hours of gameplay. After two entries that divided the entire fan base were released last generation, Soul Calibur 6 takes a page out of the playbook of many other franchises that lost their way by rebooting the series' narrative while looking for inspiration from what made its predecessor so revered. Thankfully, Soul Calibur 6 does live up to the initial promise by keeping the gameplay that has been greatly associated with the best aspects from each entry while innovating at the same time. The obvious fighting style of any Soul Calibur game is how each character performs in correlation with their weapon of choice. Certain characters like Taki uses knives and needs to be up close to an opponent to do major damage, while someone such as Keelik or Nightmare can keep a character at a distance with their staff and Soul Edge sword respectively. One of the best things about the Soul Calibur franchise has always been learning how to manage a character's distance and how to take advantage of angles, courtesy of the 8-way maneuvering that is a lot more responsive and fast compared to something like Tekken or even other Soul Calibur games. Not knowing how or when to strike with a certain character will mean instant doom. Blocking continuously isn't an advantage anymore, as the blocker's health bar will start to glow until it's red in color, and that character is prone to having their guard broken by an aggressive opponent. Gameplay additions and modifications from the previous entries, like ring outs, perfectly timed blocks and guard impact parries, lethal edge combo extenders, critical edge super moves, and the soul charge ability to temporarily make a fighter stronger, and practically invincible, all return here as well. One of the most talked about additions to the gameplay is Reversal Edge. 
Players can unleash a strike that slows down time to create a clash moment built on a rock paper scissors scenario that will reward the winner with extra strength and a meter. While reversal edge is great in concept, the execution is definitely lacking. Players can choose the same option when going for reversal edge strikes, resulting in another clash that will give the initiator the automatic successful strike if both players choose the same option yet again. Even more disappointing with reversal edge is the fact there isn't any type of limiter when it comes to the maneuver, such as it using a meter to perform, like critical edge attacks. Meaning the only way to stop reversal edge attacks from happening is landing a successful significant strike beforehand. Thankfully a player can sidestep and or guard to stop reversal edge sequences. With this game being something of a reboot to the narrative of Soul Calibur, the roster is noticeably smaller in comparison to the previous iterations, yet isn't any less effective and fun to play with as the roster is built on veteran characters with one glaring flaw, Day 1 DLC. Tira, a character that was introduced in Soul Calibur 3 and someone obviously crafted and ready for the game's release, is on disc DLC, with proof of this being her actually showing up during the game's arcade mode for someone like yours truly who hasn't purchased the season pass. This is absolutely unacceptable and there is no reason why Tira could not have been a part of the main roster. Beyond the actual gameplay are various modes including the main story mode, Soul Chronicle. With a visual novel style of storytelling, Chronicle has the player doing a lot of reading while still pictures sit on the screen, lifelessly shifting from one to the next. What could have been a memorable mode is an incredibly underwhelming chore to get through, even with its short completion time. Libra of Soul is not much better than Chronicle, just a little more exciting due to the ability to groom a created fighter into being a hero or monster, while picking up various weapons that actually helps the player learn different fighting styles in correlation with that weapon, meaning it's nice to use this mode as a tutorial if the player has the patience. While the single player modes are fine, the character creation system is as outrageous as it is limiting at times. The level of creativity seen thus far proves that Six's creation system could be better, but it's still highly commendable. One of the biggest positives when it comes to enjoying Soul Calibur 6 is online functionality. A majority of the online fights have been lag free via Xbox Live. While the action doesn't lose its quality when the fight begins, the options for fights are incredibly lacking with only two options, ranked and casual. Ranked online play is just as it is in any fighting game. But casual is where the game's online functionality comes up short, as entering a room in a casual match turns into something similar to King of the Hill mode from Mortal Kombat X where players have to wait to challenge the winner of the most recent fight instead of matching players with others in the room so multiple fights can be happening simultaneously similar to player matches in King of Fighters 14 or Marvel vs Capcom Infinite. This waiting process in casual can be incredibly tedious depending on how filled the room is, making ranked play essentially the only option to jump into a quick fight. Creative fighters can also be used in both online modes, meaning a player may be at a distinct disadvantage before the fight begins due to height and reach modifications certain creative fighters will have that the fighter their style is based off of wouldn't. With a want to return to form without sacrificing some of the gameplay modifications from the more heavily critiqued iterations has created one of the best Soul Calibur offerings in quite some time while still suffering from some odd design choices in regards to the gameplay and mode offerings. This won't go down as the best Soul Calibur ever, but is a definite step in the right direction, with this being arguably the most enjoyable game in the franchise since Soul Calibur 2. Depending on whether or not your experience with the franchise will affect how much you enjoy this entry, longtime players of Soul Calibur will feel right at home like it's two gaming generations ago, 
The gameplay is easy enough for newcomers to pick up and get the hang of a few characters, but online matches may be a little overwhelming for casual players. The mode offerings are definitely lacking, specifically in regards to the handling of online outside of ranked. As so many other fighting games have been released during this generation, that the developers could have learned from if they wanted to give gamers a truly incredible online experience. The single player modes are ultimately forgettable, while playing around with created fighters is definitely up to par. This is a must buy experience for Soul Calibur veterans and fighting game aficionados who are into weapon based brawlers, while a rental is for the best in regards to newcomers. But no matter who you are, this game definitely has soul. You'll be lost to history. The battle is over. Show respect for the fallen who fought so bravely. Want to go again? <laughs> 